This is the chamber. Once someone enters, there is no turning back. Tonight, within these steel walls, human endurance will be taken to its very limits. Participants will be subjected to unbearable environments and incredible physical stress. Scorching heat, sub-zero cold, and hurricane-force winds. If anyone can make it through all seven levels, they could walk away with more than $100,000. Game shows have long been an extremely popular form of entertainment, having been in existence almost as long as television has. There's something about watching people compete for money that is captivating, even up to today. Just look at Mr. Beast, for example. His challenge content is basically just a modern game show. Being such a popular format, it's inevitable that game shows would evolve and become more and more extreme in order to grab an audience's attention. However, you would expect there to be a line on how far they would go, and you could be forgiven for thinking that literal torture crosses that line. But apparently not, as proven by Fox's The Chamber. The Chamber aired in January of 2002 to mixed reception and controversy, which makes sense when you consider the premise of the show. The show centered around the chamber, which presumably is short for the torture chamber, since obviously that doesn't quite roll off the tongue. And in case you think I'm exaggerating, the titular chamber was a metal box with a chair inside, which the contestants would be strapped to. The box would then close and the contestant would have to endure either the hot chamber or the cold chamber. The first became extremely hot, as in up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, and sprayed flames around the contestant. The second was extremely cold, down to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit, as well as spraying the contestant with water. While this was happening, both versions of the chamber also featured things such as spinning the chair around, simulated hurricane-level winds and earthquakes, decreasing oxygen levels, and electrodes that caused muscle contractions. And if you think dangerously extreme temperatures, natural disasters, and electric chairs are bad, then just imagine having to go through all of that at once while having to answer celebrity trivia the entire time. I cannot emphasize enough how laughably insane this show was. 2002 was a different time, but I think you would have to go back to the Spanish Inquisition or something to normalize the content of the chamber. You can kind of tell that the people working on the show knew that they were going too far as well, and they tried to mitigate it by doing things like making a big show of the contestant signing a waiver on screen, even though they state they already signed one off camera. So it's basically just trying to convince the viewers that it's okay. They did also have safety measures such as heart monitors to prevent the contestants from dying on camera, which obviously would have caused a lot of financial issues. In spite of all its flaws, the show still got a respectable 10 million viewers on its premiere, which just shows that the medieval urge to watch others suffering still exists in our subconscious. However, The Chamber turned out to be anything but a hit. Even just after it released, it was being called a torture chamber and a putrid mess. It quickly got cancelled after three episodes aired, although apparently six were filmed, which means there's a good half of the show's footage probably floating around in Fox's archives somewhere. But this begs the question, how did anyone think that this was a good idea to make? The Chamber came out of Fox facing declining ratings and in the wake of the massive success of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Both of these conditions factored into Fox deciding to make their own game show, which was more daring than their regular programming. However, it seems they overcompensated in this aspect. The Chamber was primarily developed by Fox executive Mike Darnell, whose multiple interviews about the show don't exactly help put a positive spin on things. In one of them, he said that he wanted visceral reactions and wanted to hear if the contestants were in pain or suffering. He also said that his inspiration for making The Chamber was the recent hit Fear Factor, which featured contestants doing extreme stunts, which admittedly did push the boundaries a little, particularly in the case of the gross ones that involve things like eating bugs or walking across broken glass barefoot. However, I think the reason that the chamber is much more distasteful than Fear Factor is that the contestants were actively participating in the stunts, whereas with the chamber, they were just subjected to horrid conditions, even though in both cases contestants chose to participate in the show. But while Mike Darnell cites Fear Factor as his inspiration, and this might be partly true, it is pretty obvious that most of the inspiration came from ABC's The Chair. The Chair was a game show that ran at the same time as The Chamber, and was moderately more successful, being cancelled after 9 episodes compared to The Chamber's 3. The similarities don't end there though. The Chair, like the name suggests, also featured contestants strapped into a chair and subjected to stimuli, although The Chair was far more tame than The Chamber in almost every way. Not that that's a very high bar to meet. The basic premise was that contestants would answer questions while trying to keep their heart rate in check, and if they didn't, they would lose money. 
The show threw obstacles at them, such as having a pendulum swing over the head, or having the host serve tennis balls at a glass panel in front of them. While you might argue that this is some sort of psychological torment, it's at least arguable that it isn't torture, which can't really be said in the Chambers case. Anyways, the chair was actually pitched to multiple networks before ending up on ABC, one of which was Fox, with Darnell himself being in this pitch meeting. I suppose after this, he just happened to get the idea for a game show that was basically the exact same premise, but slightly worse. This resulted in the two networks racing to release their shows, because obviously rushing the production of game shows that involve putting the contestants at physical risk is a commendable idea. After both networks pushed their air dates forward, the chamber ended up releasing two days before the chair, but ended up getting sued for plagiarizing the chair. Fox then, and I swear I'm not making this up, sued back with the claim that the chair's producers snuck onto the set of the chamber and spied on them. The entire situation is even more bizarre because, as one article from the time puts it, that both shows are potentially worthless doesn't seem to have occurred to anyone involved. This was a very apt take, as nothing ended up coming from either lawsuit, probably because both shows were met with a lukewarm response at best and ended up getting cancelled. The Chair vs. The Chamber was actually only one of two lawsuits filed against The Chamber, with the second being from one of the contestants, who actually managed to get through the entire gauntlet of seven rounds of questions and win a prize of $20,000, but in a turn of events that should have been foreseen by everyone involved in this show's creation, contracted hypothermia from having gone through the cold chamber. Allegedly, the contestant, Scott Brown, won $100,000 from this suit, which as far as I know, is more money than anyone ever won on The Chamber. From what I understand, the maximum prize on the chamber was actually the same amount, which is honestly pretty low for any game show, let alone one that's genuinely life-threatening. It's truly baffling how the chamber made it through an entire production process without anyone putting a stop to it. Before the show was filmed, the original host walked off set during a rehearsal because he overheard executives discussing the ramifications if we had a bunch of mosquitoes in the chamber. This is corroborated by the reports of executives wanting to make a version of the chamber with 500 flies inside it. There were also allegedly plans for an electric shock themed chamber, and while I can't find a definitive source for the idea, I don't doubt that the producers of the chamber didn't see having a literal execution method appear in their game show as problematic, considering they let everything else in the show on the air. I suppose we're lucky the chamber was cancelled as quickly as it was, or who knows how insane it would have gotten. I suppose the lesson of this story, if you needed to learn a lesson about something so obvious, is not to make a game show about torturing your contestants, and if you do, maybe at least give a better payout than game shows that don't indulge in medieval interrogation methods. Anyway, that's the story of the chamber. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.